All right, so our next project we're going to be doing is a street corner. So uh, what I've done is gone through, and like I told you I wanted you to do, is go through and get some reference images of street corners <clears throat> and different things that are on street corners. So here are some images that I grabbed off the Internet of just different things that we would have. And the goal of this is that we're doing just a corner building and then populating it with some things that are at that corner. So we may have uh, lights, we may have little bannery things, street signs, we may have, uh, depending on what kind of building you have, it's going to look a little bit different. Uh, trash cans, <clears throat> it may have some tree type things, uh, newspaper boxes, phones. I like this phone uh, box that I found. It has this piece of litter here, and it also has this coffee cup on top of it. I thought that was a nice touch. And you'll also be able to basically kind of figure out, you know, what what style you're looking at. If you look at this phone box, it looks very uh, stylish, like I'm going to say futuristic, but maybe something that was like brand new, right off the factory floor kind of thing. Um, this one here looks obviously a little bit older, a little bit more realistic looking than that one. Okay. So if you're going for something more futuristic, you may have something like this. All right, and then stop signs, different storefronts, you know, what kind of store would be uh, out front of this thing. And this is obviously a painting or, or something. And then this was the um, an idea of what someone else has done, basically the same thing that we're going to be doing, which is taking um, our plan and then putting it into a 3D model. Okay. So, lots of reference. You need reference for this assignment to even consider working. One of the hardest things is finding a good image of um, a corner building. So, what I'm going to recommend you do is just pick a city. So, something like, I pick Boston. Boston, Massachusetts. I can go to Maps. <clears throat> and I'm in Google Maps. And I'm just zooming into wherever this pop me in and then I can take my little yellow guy here and just drag him and now I can basically get my 360 of some stuff just to get some ideas of different things that might be on a corner so I can just keep scooting and scooting and scooting and I can say okay well, let's I like this building I like this stuff here I actually don't like the building because it's too plain it doesn't really have a whole lot of detail to it nothing really crazy fancy okay but that's the idea is that you just find an area and it might take a little uh, time to just go through uh, but you might see other stuff that you like you might like the lamp posts here you might like these little flowers you can do an alt print screen on your screen, go into Photoshop, make a new document and paste it and what you see here will be pasted in Photoshop. Okay. Google Images or Google Maps uh, is just unbelievable as to how detailed we can get. We can look up things that, you know, normally we would just have to search and search and search until we found something. Well, now I can just type in New York. Drop my little dude on there. And now I can see what it looks like in New York. Okay. When we're doing this, we're doing just a single building. We want the one building to be somewhat fancy. We don't want it to be like a cathedral. We just want it to be like a storefront. Uh, we want it to have some detail, some character. We want it to look like it has a little bit of a life into it. Okay, so that would be your first step is to go through and get reference for all of your stuff. Okay, lots and lots of reference. The second step is to be coming into Maya, make a project, street corner Sarcona. So I click new, type it in, make sure it's set to the right spot. I hit accept. And then our first actual step of this is to kind of block this thing out. So all I've done here 
is just block out what I want my building to kind of look like. Okay, so I'm going to go through a couple steps of just blocking things out. So the building is just a cube. That's all it is. It's a cube. I added an, an edge loop here, an edge loop here, and then I just extruded this. Insert a couple edge loops here, extruded that. These are just cubes. This is a cylinder that I deleted part of it and it's just an overhang. This is a cube, this is a cube. This is that phone booth and this is not lined up right. And some things may not even make sense as to why they're there. Like the phone booths typically don't have this pole that goes underneath. But I thought it was a nice little touch just to kind of make it seem a little bit more realistic. I'm eventually going to have wires and stuff going alongside the building too. I have a couple signs that are right now just cubes. I have a traffic light which is a cube and some cylinders. There's a little cylinder here and some cylinders there. I did do a little bit of modeling here just to get the idea of what this is. Uh, but this just started off as a cylinder with very few divisions and I just extruded a couple sections. Obviously I want to go in and actually detail this a lot more. Uh, this here is a bike rack. Okay, and This is one of the reasons that we need reference is because we want to be able to get an idea of how this thing is created. Originally when I made this I did I found the image There it is. And I said, okay, I get it. It's just a bunch of uh, half toruses cut in half and then along there. So I modeled this and the first rendition of this had all of these like evenly spaced. And that didn't really make sense because the bikes have to fit in somewhere where the wheel gets wedged. So then I came back and fixed it so that these are a little bit closer. And then the next thing I forgot to do was... Um, raise this off the ground so that when you set your bike tire in here that the wheel is actually like below this bar so that it fits snugly and doesn't fall over and break okay and I did do a little bit of modeling to uh, the corner here just to give me an idea of the walking path and all that stuff alright so I'm gonna go through just the setup process of this just so you can see what we're gonna be doing so the first thing we need to do is create um, our plane so I'm just going to um, actually create a cylinder nope, not a cylinder I'm going to create a plane, that's what I want to create and I'm just going to make this some some size <clears throat> okay, now if I want to do this accurately I'm going to go to Window General Editor Visor, and I'm going to bring in a guy. So inside here, under mocap examples, I have this guy that's just walking. There's a walking guy, there's a running guy, there's a cartwheeling. Obviously the walking makes the most sense. So I'm just going to middle drag the guy in here. Alright, so now the guy is in here. So I get this locator, and this is how I move and scale the guy. If I zoom way out, I can see the guy. There he is. Now why is this guy so big? Well, let's go to Create, Measure Tools, Distance Tool. And I'm just going to hold down the V key, click on the top of his head. Hold down the V key still, click on his foot. And you can see the number that I get here is about 178. Okay. Obviously it's on a little bit of an angle, but... Ideally, I get about 178. If I come to this chart that I pulled up of human height conversion chart, 178 centimeters, which is right here, is about 5 foot 10. Okay? This guy is in real scale. He is the actual scale of a human being should be. The Maya units are centimeters. He's 178 centimeters. So this dude is about 5 foot 10 and a quarter, maybe. Okay, so I can delete let's go to the outliner and delete my um, not the lo that one. Delete my two locators in that distance, and essentially this is how big my scene should be. Okay, here's my grid, super duper tiny. This guy should be that big, or the the scene should be that big. So I'm just gonna scale my stuff up until it is about that big. Okay, now this does mean that we're gonna deal with other stuff. Like as I start zooming out, I might get this happening where 
my stuff just slowly disappears. But that shouldn't matter because we're not going to really zoom out that much. Okay, so here's this guy. And I'm going to go through my polyplane options and just get rid of all the divisions. Okay, except for two. And the two divisions that I have here, this one going across is going to be um, one area, and this is the one curb, and this one's going to be the other curb. So I'm just going to line these up to where I need them to be. So let's move that there. Scoot that there. Okay, I can always scale this later if I need to. So I'm going to take this cube here and just extrude it. Okay, and then looking at our guy, I can see how big should that curve be. Obviously, it shouldn't be up here. That'd be more like, you know, a small wall. Okay, so maybe a curb is like that big. All right, that should be sufficient. Okay, now what I want to do is I want to make a nice rounding here for where that um, wall would come in. If I look at some of my images, you can see how big this arch is right here. Right in front of the golden arches, they have this big arch. Uh, so what I want to do is I'm going to delete these guys. Okay, Because I've done this before, I kind of know how that's going to be set up. Now you're looking at this saying, well, why don't you just make a cube? And I could have. I could have just made a cube. There's nothing wrong with just making a cube and going from there. But I decided to go this route. So I'm going to go to Edge. And I'm going to pick on that edge right there. I'm going to go to my Polygon menu. I'm going to go to Edit Mesh. I'm going to say Bevel. And you can see that it just chops it right in half. So now I can go to Segments and just add some segments in here. So maybe 10 segments is pretty good. I can change my Offset to control how big that curve is going to be. I don't think I want to go as big as this one is. This seems like really round, and if you look back here, it actually looks like this whole block is a bit of a round type of block. So I'm going to go with something like that. Okay. Um, now let's look at the geometry with this. When we did this bevel, we got this edge here, and of course we get the edge and face underneath, which we don't really need, so I can just delete that. But we get this edge here that goes across. This face here if I count the sides, it has one, two, three, four, five sides. Maya doesn't like things to have more than four sides. It can, it just doesn't like it too much. So I'm going to go to Edit Mesh. I'm going to go to the Interactive Split Tool. And I'm just going to split this up. So I'm going to click here. And then I'm going to click right here and then click right there. And then hit Enter. So then I can grab these vertices, keep everything nice and straight and line that up. Now I can go to the side view and wiggle this around until it's lined up with that. Right there. Okay. It doesn't seem right. Front view. Yeah, it's definitely crooked. I may have gone too far one way. Oh, uh, what's happening is I can't see the other side. <laughs> That's why it's doing that. Uh, so I'm going to go to View, Select Camera. I'm going to take my far clipping plane, and I'm just going to add a zero in the middle of this. And then I'm going to go to my near clipping plane and set that to 1. All right, so now let me see if I can grab those points. Go to my side view. It's still going to the same spot. Let me grab these points here and just see where they're at. And those points are right there. Oh, I was really far down. There you go. So now I think we're good. 
So that looks pretty straight. Now obviously that was a big mess to have to keep doing that and that's not a preferred method to do it. So I'm going to go in with my insert interactive split tool again right there. Click here and then click here, here, and here. Enter. Then I can go to my vertices and grab this. Now this is my preferred method is I hold down V and I click just in the direction I want these to move. So I click on just the red and I drag it and line it up. There we go. So now it's nice and neat. Okay. So now what I'm going to do is delete this edge. And I can on this one I can hit just delete. Okay, because it's not removing any vertices. There's a vertice here that I need. There's a vertice here that I need. So I'm going to hit delete. Then I'm going to go with my interactive split tool and just start cutting this thing up. Actually, let me start in the middle. It'll make more sense. So if I look at this, uh, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. I have 9. So what's going to happen is 4 are going to go this way, 4 are going to go up, and then we'll see what happens with the other one. Okay, so I'm going to go with this one first. And just cut this here. And I'm actually going to delete this back face, so I don't even need to worry about cutting it down there. Go this way. And I can actually just zip right through all those. And the reason we're doing this is because we want everything to be quads. Everything should have four uh, edges to it. This is that one. Oops. Obviously this one got a little funky. Let me just go through and cut like that. Enter. Okay. So one, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. There you go. And then this guy, if you look at it, this last edge, there's one one, two, three, four uh, edges that make up that face. That's what we want. Okay? So now I can go back to my top view. And I'm just going to line these up just so that they are straight. This might seem like a big hassle, but it really pays off when you're working on stuff. Okay, so I'm marking it, holding V, clicking and dragging the arrow. And then I'm just moving my mouse over. So I won't hold down V. You see it snaps here, it snaps there. So I'm going to move my mouse over to this one, and you see how it snaps it right in line with that. Okay, now I can do a section of these at a time. If I grab all of these, and I hold down V, it's not going to work at first. Okay, you see how it still keeps it on that angle. If I go into the Move Tool options by double-clicking the Move Tool, there we go, there's an option in here called Retain Component Spacing. I can turn it off. Then I hold V and click. There we go. Now it's going to take some just getting used to doing this kind of thing. But you can see how quick this is going to be. That's beautiful there. And let me straighten it the other way. And let's take a second to select these. You know? And then I just have to move these other ones that are back here to get these in line. And obviously, I could select these in other views and it might make it easier, but it works. I really enjoy being efficient with my work and not just uh, kind of just getting it done. Getting it done is not going to help you. You have to be efficient too because whatever you have to change something. There we go. Now that is a beautiful street corner. Okay. It's gorgeous. Okay, so now where's the rest of the street? <laughs> We're going to go to Edge. Uh, actually, let me delete the space back here. We don't need these. There we go. I'm going to go to Edge. I'm going to double click this bottom edge. And you see how it grabs it all the way around? So I'm just going to hold Control and just deselect these extra edges here. So 
So I just have that bottom edge going along. So now I can take this and go to Edit Mesh Extrude and just pull this out. Okay. So far, everything we have right now is a quad. Okay. And this is what a quad allows us to do. Is if I can go to Edit Mesh, Insert Edge Loop, and I can click and drag. That means my quads are working. I can also click and drag this way or click and drag this way and it goes straight across. That means everything's working. That's how we want it to work. Okay, when we get into things like doing the hand and doing some of our other stuff, this is going to be extremely important because we can't do it any other way. All right, so now that we have this, then we can go through and uh, start to shape what this is going to look like. If we look at this one, obviously this sidewalk here is pretty big, okay? Um, so if I wanted a big sidewalk, let me just throw my building in. So I'm going to just create a cube. Okay, make this bigger. And I like to put my pivot in the bottom corner. So I'm going to hold down D and oops, D and V and just move my pivot right to this front corner. Okay, then I can move this into position. And I'm just going to use this as a starting point. So I'm going to hold V to snap and snap it there. Okay, now I can just scale it back this way, scale it back that way, and scale it up without having to move it around or doing anything crazy. Now I can judge, here's my guy, here's my street, is this big enough? You know, do I want this to be uh, wider or anything? And I think maybe I do. So I'm just going to grab the vertices and we'll just see what the vertices are going to do. If I pull it this way, like that, I can go into this mode. Oops. With these guys you can't select them that way go. All right, so that gives me a bigger um, sidewalk area that I can play with okay and then my building is a little bit further back okay uh, the approach that's here if you look it kind of comes in and then dips down and then comes back up and then dips down and comes back up and it's pretty gradual I mean this entire thing is uh, pretty intricate as far as how the model is going to go um, I'm going to take this here oops, to here and we originally straightened this out but I'm just going to scoot that guy over. The same thing with this one. I'm going to click this one, shift click that one and oops, pull this over. Click this one, shift click that one. Now I'm just kind of spacing these out a little bit further. Okay, I'm basically lining up where I want um, that sidewalk dip to be. Okay, and I can't go in here and start pulling these because it's going to start ruining that curve. So I just have to be very careful as to how I move this. No one's going to look at it from the top, so we have some freedom there. But I just can't go crazy with it. So this is just tweaking, just trying to get, you know, where where's the sidewalk uh, transition going to happen? And I'm lining up those lines to kind of dictate where that transition is going to happen. Okay. So I think this is good because I can basically pretend this is the sidewalk. Right? Maybe not even that one. Right here. That's my transitional area right there. And then coming from the other way, that's my transitional area here. So I'll have this as my little dip, or my little bowing area, and these will be my dipping areas. Okay. So now what I need to do is I can't simply grab this face and push it down because it looks funny. Okay. Even if I went back like this. Maybe it's not going to look too bad. Let me grab the other ones and see. Sometimes you can get away with this kind of stuff, and sometimes you just can't. Okay. I think we can work with it. So let me just scoot this oops, in and down a little bit. 
And then obviously it's a transition where I've just basically created a step, okay? So these back ones should be up higher. And these ones should be up a little bit higher. And I'm actually going to switch to vertice mode because I think it's going to be a little bit easier to create the transition I want. So I am taking some time to model this area, okay? This is something that's not going to change terribly. A lot of this is going to be texture. So I can take my time and kind of actually model some of what this is going to look like. That's good there. Do this side. Come into the middle. So I'm just tweaking these points, just trying to get them into a position that makes it look like we have this transition. Now I'm not going to be able to get the entire thing just from those points there because this looks a bit too blocky. Uh, to have something like that. I could smooth it out, but then I get this really weird soft look to it, okay? So there's several th different things we can try. One of them is double click this edge, shift double click this edge, that way we grab the whole thing, and I could throw a bevel on it. Same thing on the bottom, another bevel, okay? So now if I go through and smooth, now I get sharp edge here, sharp edge there, and then I get this soft transition. Okay, so that could work. The other thing I can do is go and insert some edge loops. So if I insert an edge loop like here and here, those edge loops I just put in will allow me to kind of tweak this even further and just say, okay, well now that I have this, I can probably take these and pull that over. Maybe pull this down a little bit more here. And just basically, I'm just creating that transition. Okay, without having to go through and smooth out this entire thing. Okay. I could even put in an edge loop there and an edge loop here. And if I did go to three and smooth it out, you can see how we're getting that kind of shape. Okay, This point uh, corner right here is a little bit too pointy still. So I'm just going to go with my vertices and just tweak it. But if you looked at that picture, you can tell that it's a really nice transition from all these pieces. There we go. All right, so let's say that that's good there. We have a nice transition here. I can probably widen this one a little bit more. So I'm gonna go to my vertices, grab, Grab these guys and just widen this a little bit. Okay, there we are. A guy has a little bit more room to walk down the alleyway or down the sidewalk. All right, so that's good. So now let me go and find this guy's locator. It should be around here at the origin. I'm just going to scoot him over like that. And then if I hit play, uh, let me give myself more frames here. If I hit play, you'll see that he walks. And he's going to go through the ground. There's nothing we can do about that except kind of just scoot him up. Okay. Our guy is for us to kind of eyeball to see, is this working? Is this looking correct? In this picture, if we had someone standing here, we could kind of judge that a little bit better. Um, if we had some other items, like, you know, how tall is this? Usually that comes to maybe about chest. This comes to about maybe your stomach. 
Okay, so you can kind of eyeball and, and gauge some of these things. And just as easily as I change this here, if I realize that, okay, well, I want this to be longer, I can make that longer. Okay, so we're never like really set in stone until we get to that rendering stage. All right, so here's our building. Uh, I can play with the size of this a little bit. Okay, if we figure that our guy is right here, and I can grab the guy, there we go. If I grab inside him, I'm grabbing these joints, and I could rotate them around if I needed to, but we don't want to do that. I can grab the skin of him and duplicate it. Okay, now you can see this is grayed out. So if I come to the channel box, I can highlight these, right click, and unlock. And now I can go through and move them around. Okay. So if I figure that uh, each floor of a building is about 10 feet, so let's just say it's about like that tall is how tall a building would be, or one floor would be, this guy is going to be about two of them. So I can make this a two-story building by doing something like that. Or I could say I have 10 feet per floor uh, times how many inches, 12 inches in a foot, and then we have to convert that to centimeters, so we multiply that by 2.54, and we get 304.8. Okay, so if I come in with my measure tool, I hold down V, click on this bottom point, hold down V, click on this top point, you can see them at 536. Okay, so that was for one floor. So if I went to, let's just round this to 310, 620. I would be at a two floor. So I'm just going to grab the little locator. There's a little locator up here that comes with that distance tool. That's what we're creating that creates where the distance is. I'm just going to pull this up until we get to about 620 right there. And then I can scale this up until we're at about 620. Okay, it doesn't have to be 100% accurate, but you want to use it as a, as a reference for where things should be. I'm going to delete this other guy if we don't want him. Okay, we could even measure this to that and figure out, okay, well, that needs to be, you know, legally it needs to be three feet or whatever. So we could play with those two. And I'm just going to tweak this a little bit more. Uh, just like our, our cream that we created in the Gillette can, um, it's going to take some tweaking to get this stuff to look the way you want it to look. Okay, so don't ever really be set on saying okay that's perfect that's exactly what I want because it typically never is exactly what you want okay usually we just have to settle for what we have time for okay. so I'm just gonna leave it there like that but I'm probably gonna go back and, and tweak it even more all right whatever okay so now we have our building we have our sidewalk here Let's go doing through go through and do some management. I'm gonna delete the history on my sidewalk. We'll name it sidewalk. I'll put it on a layer and we'll call it sidewalk layer. Here's our building, we'll make a building. Again, delete the history. Give it a name. And then this is our just reference guy. We can just throw him on a layer. Okay. Now I marqueed, and this is what went on the layer was just what I had marqueed, which is just that that joint. So I have to make sure that I marquee that. Okay, the center area, which selects his whole joints, and then add that to that list. Click on the skin of him, right click and add that to the list. And then I can turn them on and off. Okay. And we also get at the origin. Did I grab it? There it is. Around the origin, I have this little locator. That guy goes on the same thing. So I'm just going to right click and add. There we go. And then that's just an extra locator. All right. So now we have our sidewalk, our walk skin, which is that guy. Uh, reference, which is all those joints. And then the building. Good. Okay. So now the next part of this is just going to be going through and uh, laying out some uh, extra stuff. Okay. 
Now we need to figure out uh, what we're going to be doing for camera angles and whatever else. For this shot, we're only going to do three seconds. Okay, so let's pull out our calculator. 24 times three is 72. Actually, let's do four seconds. Four times 96. There we go. So we're going to do 96 frames. So I'm going to just change my time down here to 96. So that's how many frames we have. I'm going to click on the blue circle. And I'm going to create a separate camera. I don't want to mess around with my perspective camera because I may want to actually uh, work in it. So let me go to panels, perspective, new. Click on the blue circle. All right. And this is just looking a little bit too flat for me. So I'm going to go to my focal length and maybe make it 20 just so I get a little bit more perspective on this. Or maybe not that much. Maybe 25. Yeah, I think 25 will be good. We get a little a bit of depth here in the building where you can see at 35. We're basically like really tight on the building. We can't really get a lot of stuff in. So 25 for me <clears throat> seems like it's a good value. All right. I'm probably going to dip that down too. I think that's probably too high also. People are going to trip over it. All right. So I have my cameras kind of set up where I want it. We're just going to do a little swipe like this. Okay, just something side to side like that. So I'm going to go here. I'm going to click on my select camera button. Make sure I'm at frame 1. And hit S. Go to frame 96. Rotate my camera a little bit. Hit S again. That's it. Okay. It's probably not the world's most exciting camera move. That's fine. It doesn't have to be. We're going to be doing some other stuff with this one. Uh, we may get into rendering this out as a stereoscopic, so like a 3D camera. So I just want to make sure we have some um, rotation in here. All right, so that's it. So there's our camera. And now we can use that camera to kind of figure out what do we need to have set up in here. Where are we missing things? So I'm just going to start placing some objects. So I'm going to use a cube. Okay, and just like before, I like my pivots to be on the bottom. So I hold down D and V and move my pivot to one of these bottom corners. Uh, I'm probably going to go with this back left corner um, just because I can basically snap this down to the bottom here. Scoot it against the building. There we go. And then I can play with how big it is without moving it away from the building. Okay. So if I had, let's say, one of those um, newspaper boxes, maybe it's about like that. Okay. And again, we can use the calculator to give us an estimate. If we figure that it's at stomach level, if we go to here, not there. If we go here and see that this is probably about stomach, maybe mid chest, maybe that's about four feet off the ground. Okay, so 48 inches times 2.54, and that gives us 121 centimeters. Where's Maya? So if I reset all these to one, super tiny, if I take this to 121 centimeters, and then just scale this out, and scale that out. That's about how big it should be. And if I bring my guy back in here, and he walks down the street, all right, I may have to scoot my guy down further. You can see this is about chest level. Obviously, uh, maybe 36 inches would have been a little bit more appropriate. Uh, seems like it might even be right. Uh, 2.5, 91. So we could also just punch in 91 and just see how that looks. Obviously, that looks too short now. Okay. So you can eyeball it too. It just doesn't have to be 100% accurate, but you want to get it kind of in the realm of where it's at. There we go. Okay. So that's my newspaper box. So I'm just going to label this uh, newspaper box. 
Okay, so there's my newspaper box. And then uh, maybe some signs, so I'll just duplicate my newspaper box. And, you know, signs come in all different shapes and sizes and colors and whatever else. So I'm just going to have this here. I'll say sign one. Duplicate it. Scoot this forward. And that'll be sign two, which already names it. Okay. Maybe I'll have that fire hydrant. So I'll show you how I created the fire hydrant. Not that it's a secret or anything. Fire hydrants may be two feet off the ground. We could even Google search fire hydrant. Right. How tall is a fire hydrant? 30.5 inches. 30.5 times 2.54. 77.47. So let me come here. 77.47. We round it out. Again, pivot on the bottom. DV, move pivot. There you go. It seems awfully tall for a fire hydrant. Okay. Now, if I click on this, this is 121. If I click on this, this is 77. Obviously, it's taller than this. So, what's going on? Well, on a cube, the default settings are set to have everything at 111. On a cylinder, the default settings have the height at 2. So when I type in 77.47, it's actually double that because this is doubling it. So I'm just going to set that to 1. There we go. So now that's appropriate. Do I pivot back? I'll move it down to the ground. I'll scoot it over here. There we go. So there's our fire hydrant. I don't want it blocking the front of the store. The door is going to be about here. So I'm just going to put this off to the side like that. Okay. That seems like an about an appropriate size for that. Uh, for my subdivisions, I'm going to take this down to about eight. I'm going to take my. I'm going to leave the cap on. Okay. I'm actually going to add three caps because I'm just going to round it. Okay, so let's get into that. I can go to my height, add a couple divisions like that. And I'm just going to go to face. I clicked on one face, clicked on the other face. This isn't the final model. This is just a rough. It just gives me a better idea of what I'm working with. Pull those out. Okay. Obviously, it's not square. It doesn't need to be square, but just for our OCD, I'll just tweak this and tweak that. It's better. Now we'll go to edge up here, and I'll just double click this edge and pull it up and scale it out a little bit. I'll go to the next edge, double click, pull it up. Oops, we got deselected. Scale it out. Now I can't double click this edge, so I just go to vertex and click the vertice. Okay, so now we've made just a very, really quick fire hydrant. Okay, so I got a newspaper box, I got my signs, I got my fire hydrant. Of course, you want to call a fire hydrant. And we can delete the history on this at that point. I'm just going to rotate it a little bit just so I can see the signs of it, sides of it. All right, so now for the rest of the stuff is, the rest of the stuff is just going to be basic stuff. Uh, I forgot a couple things on here. That's why you have reference. Okay, not that we need to go into this much detail, but just so that we get the idea across that it is a fire hydrant. Let's move these guys up Come on. a little bit. Let's go and insert some edge loops. And I'm just going to grab the face here, shift click that one, or shift double click that one. Extrude, pull the blue arrow. Same thing here. Shift, double click, extrude, pull it out. There we go. Okay. 
Not that it needed that, but why not? Uh, let's go to the building, and this is where we're really going to see stuff. As I click and drag in here, I can see just it looks plain. I have obviously something here. I have something there, so I need something right in this area. Okay. I may even tighten up my camera a little bit just, just to get a little bit closer to this stuff. So I'm going to grab my camera and just scoot in a little bit more. I don't want to show as much street as I'm showing. And that's probably good there. So I'm going to reset my key there, go to 96. Reset my key. I like that camera move better. Let me just get rid of this. It's a little bit of street here I don't want to see. Okay, there we go. Alright, so now we can go back to our creating tools. I make a cylinder. This is a street light. Again, you can Google search how tall a street light is and how tall everything is. Just come back and put one there just so that we're at the actual height. I'm just going to put my pivot at the edge. There it is. Okay, like I said, this is just placeholders. This is just so that we get an idea of what we need to model, where we need to model it. I've seen it too many times to kind of skip this thumbnail stage. Okay, obviously, it's a bit thick. Thin this down. I don't want it to come up this high, obviously, because then I can't see it. Okay, if that's a street light or something. So it's going to be about this height. And this is going to be a uh, sign, street sign. So I'm going to go in with a plane. Take my divisions down. Rotate it 90. And that looks enormous, so I'll just scale that down. And I'll put the pivot in the corner. And then I can duplicate it, I can rotate it. Pull this part down a little bit here. And I think I'd want to have this whole thing rotated. So I'm just going to grab all three of these. Actually, I'll just grab these two pieces, shift click that, and parent it. That way I can rotate that slightly. All right, I'm not really uh, excited about how this looks like it's on an angle, and this looks like it's on an angle. So I'm going to go to View, Camera Tools, I'm going to use what's called the Azimuth Elevation Tool. Okay, And I'm just going to click and drag downward, or sorry, upward, until my stuff becomes straight. And I can hold down Alt and Middle Mouse Button Drag to pull it down. There we go. Okay, Basically it's just straightening out the camera, that's all it's doing. So I need to click on my camera. Reset my key here, go to the end of this, and then just adjust that as well. If I'm trying to do something stylized, maybe I would have that really distorted look, but I don't want that. I want this to be pretty straight. I'm happier with that. There we go. Okay, so I can just switch back to the move tool and click off. All right, so now I can see, okay, these two signs here, they probably need to come down a little bit. Not too much because this guy is going to be walking by here. I don't want him to be able to hit it. Okay, maybe I'll make them smaller too. We'll see about that. All right, where's my door going to go? I'm just going to borrow my newspaper box and scoot it over here. So I'm just going to click on the middle here, 
hold C, and just middle mouse button drag. Okay, and that just snaps it right to that edge. Okay, when you snap to curve, which is what C does, I just click in the middle to say I want everything to snap. I hold down C, I don't touch this at all anymore, and I just middle mouse button drag along a curve I want to snap to. It'll take some time to get used to. But get used to it because it's going to definitely save you lots of time. To know how tall is a door? Again, you can look it up. But if we figure this guy is about 5 foot 10, it's going to be obviously a little bit bigger than him. Okay? You may want to jump to like an actual side view of this or, or looking at the side view instead of our angle we were at because sometimes that can be deceiving. There we go. So that's good. I'm going to duplicate it, scoot it over here. It's getting hard to see my stuff because the grays are basically blending in. So I'm going to turn on the wireframe unshaded, which is right here. I'm going to go a little bit off the ground. Make it even with the door. Ish. And then just scale this out. We have a nice little window display. Then I'm going to duplicate this for some upstairs windows. So I'm imagining that uh, maybe there's uh, a family that, uh, or a company here, and then maybe there's another company upstairs, possibly. And because it's a company upstairs, they would have these like narrow windows. I had it inside one of my images here. Kind of like this. It was really narrow windows. That might even be a house, but I just like that narrow window idea. And the company is like letting you peek at the light, but not actually see any of it. So I'm just going to duplicate, scoot it over, shift, duplicate, just like we did our lights. There we go. And again, this doesn't have to be perfect. This is just us kind of like lining things up. I think what I want to do is get rid of I like the idea of having them bunched into like two sections so maybe I'll just take these two and scoot these closer and then I can duplicate these scoot it over duplicate those scoot it over there we go I like that because it just gives it a little bit of design Nothing too crazy, just something apart from just being boring. Okay, now you can see I can't even see these other two windows. I can barely see these, which is fine. I don't need to see too much of them, but I just have to be aware that I'm not gonna spend six hours modeling this window because I'm not even gonna see it. This window I barely see. These ones I see basically the bottom side. I don't see anything up here. I don't think. No, I don't. Okay, so in this file, I'm not really seeing anything that's crazy high up there. Okay. I could also scoot these things down if I wanted to just make sure that I had something there. All right. uh, I'm going to go to Create Cylinder. And I'm going to just cheat and take my... Uh, go to Faces here and just delete this. And then just delete this, and this, and oops, that. All right, so now I have this little I don't know, piece of pie. I move my pivot right here just by DV and snapping it to it. Snap my object over here using curve snapping. And then I can just extrude. Obviously, I could have done that several ways, but this exact moment when I did it, that seemed like the most logical way. Just delete that face underneath. Uh, maybe scale this out a little bit. Okay, there's different kinds of awnings too. I'm just choosing this type of awning. And then scoot it above the door. There we go. So I'm just going to keep going through. This is the same process for everything else we're going to create. 
we want to maintain our organization. I want to make sure that everything I'm creating, I'm organizing. Uh, this is our door, our big window. These are our little windows. I can just grab all six of these, go up here to this rename, and just say stairs windows zero one and it'll name them upstairs windows zero one zero two three four five six and it says awning okay so now let me just start grabbing some stuff uh, I'll put it on a new layer called building detail Also on street items. Uh, that'll be a street item also. So let's add that. And I'll make one called signage. So I'm, I'm probably gonna have several signs. I'll even include that in my signage. There we go. So now everything's nice and organized. Okay. So we haven't gone too crazy. Uh, obviously we want to save our work. So we'll go to save as. For whatever reason, in 2014, when you import this dude here, and then you go to save as, it jumps you to um, the program files, Autodesk, whatever. You can just open up your scenes here and then say base modeling building V01 and just keep working on it. Okay, so now I'm at a point where I can look at this and say, okay, I have this here, I have this here. Some signs, I need some stuff over here. I need some extra stuff over there. Um, the other one that I had, sure, it has lots of stuff to it, okay? So obviously it's a different angle. I do have a little bit of that uh, angling in that I'm gonna have to fix. I have a payphone here. Now if I look at this and I say, okay, what if I didn't have these things? Oops. Obviously I have a lot of stuff here and not a lot of stuff there so it looks blank think of your design classes where you had to create stuff like balance and symmetry and flow and weighting and whatever else okay same thing is going to apply here so you have to kind of look at that and try to figure out how do we incre include some of that stuff okay keep that stuff all right so just uh you're going to create your own design and you don't need to follow mine exactly uh, but you do have to have the same kind of things in there and it has to look good that's the end goal is for it to look good I would try to avoid having something like this with a big window like that because um, then you have to put stuff on the inside of the building and you don't want to have to do that okay my little windows are not gonna have too much stuff in it and realistically if it's closed I could just have the curtains drawn like this one is okay or I could just have a bunch of posters and stuff in the windows kind of showing stuff off. Okay, so go here, grab, or go here, go to Google, grab a bunch of images, and also go to uh, CG Textures. Oh, I have to spot it right. <laughs> type it there and go to it so go to CG textures and just start grabbing images that you want to use in your stuff okay if you know you're gonna need a certain kind of brick for your building type in brick say I really like this kind of brick I want my building to look kind of old-fashioned I grab that or I want it to look kind of weathered grab that or I want it to be this kind of brick so I grab that okay Obviously, some of these are not going to fit. Like this one, I don't think would really fit unless you had something that says medieval. So unless you had a medieval corner building. Um, and some of these just, you know, aren't really appropriate. You want to find ones that are big enough to use and are workable. So let's pretend that I like this one. So I click on that image. 
it gives me three different images in this case that I can choose from. This one says tiled, okay? And tiled means that the top left corner is gonna match up with the bottom left corner, okay? And then it's also gonna match up with this side and that side. So if I took this image and I copied it and pasted it, pasted it, pasted it, pasted it right next to each other, you wouldn't really be able to tell the seam exactly. You might see a pattern, but you're not really gonna tell the seam. These ones are a bit more organic looking, uh, but are still nice. You wanna grab the biggest one you can. So I have a pro account, so I can download the biggest one, which is 5,000 pixels. Uh, this one's 5,000 pixels. They're not all going to be 5,000 pixels, but you want to pick the one from here. Don't right-click on this and say save image because you're going to get the low-res thumbnail version. You have to click on one of these to do that. Now, you only get 15 megabytes a day. I have a pro account, so I get 100. So you have to make sure that you kind of do this on a daily basis is go to this website and just start collecting textures you're going to need, okay? Or get with a friend and say, hey, do you... Uh, what textures do you have? What textures do uh, I have? We can swap them. Um, they also have signs. So here's like a bump. Here's a subway sign. Don't even think of parking here sign. Burger sign. Um, avoid anything that is going to have transparency on it because we're not at that stage yet. And that's going to just cause a whole lot of other stuff. Okay. So you can tell a little story with your uh, street corner. Um, whatever else. Whatever else you, you think you might need. They have lots of stuff inside here. They have pictures of buildings. So you can get an idea of some of the stuff that you, know, you might want to include in there. Here's pictures of different kinds of windows. Here's pictures of different kinds of windows. Here are some shops. So you can even get your reference images from here too. See, look at that, with all the sale signs in there, you can't even really see inside the windows. But if I had something like this, I better have mannequins and clothing and whatever else showing, okay? It's not a bad idea if you have the stuff to do it, but at this stage, you really don't have the stuff to do it. Something like this is probably doable because it's not that difficult to create a bunch of skateboards. The texturing would be difficult. Okay, so that's going to be it. So that's the first step in um, this entire mess is just to go through and lay out what your building is going to look like initially. And then we'll get into the actual modeling of all that stuff once that's done. This should take probably a class to do, so three hours-ish to do. Don't let it take two weeks to do because you'll fall behind and you won't get it done. Okay, this is going to be a quick assignment. But we have to just get this stuff um, laid out first and then we'll move on to the next step.